This stream is the North Fork of the South Platte River, an important part of the South Platte watershed, a river that's been the lifeline of development for Metro Denver and points east. The North Platte River also originates in Colorado, flowing north into Wyoming before it bends east into Nebraska. The confluence of the two rivers is near the town of North Platte, Nebraska. The Platte has influenced transportation and settlements in its multi-state region for centuries. It's something that's always in the back of my mind when I'm up here monitoring. Chris Ray and his co-worker test the water quality at locations along the river as it moves towards the city. I grew up in a small town on the Platte River, uh, about an hour away from where the Platte River empties into the Missouri. And so I grew up playing in the river and, and uh, spending a lot of time there. And so it's really interesting to me, especially to be in the very high parts of the watershed where I can step across the Platte versus where I grew up where the bridge is a quarter of a mile long. The water looks clear enough to drink, and today you probably could, here at about 8,700 feet, very near the Roberts Tunnel, which supplements the eastbound Platte with water from the west side of the Continental Divide. The pH of the site is a 7.05. People might recognize that as what people think is neutral pH. On-site tests are looking at pH level, temperature, turbidity or clearness of the water, conductivity, dissolved oxygen, and metals. It's pure pristine because we're above those kind of impacts, human impacts or even environmental impacts, and that's why we in Denver are so lucky to have this source that we do. We are largely the first users of this water. From the mountain peaks to the western edge of Denver, some 60 miles as the crow flies, the South Platte arrives at one of three potable water treatment plants, Marston. These are conventional sand and coal filters, so it's 8 inches of sand and 34 inches of anthracite coal. Even though the water is relatively clean, it still must be filtered and disinfected. Then it's sent out to consumers, but Denver Water continues to closely monitor it. The laboratory is analyzing samples that come from the distribution system. That's the network of pipes that connect homes and businesses to the treatment plants. Denver water is used by nearly a million and a half people before it arrives here at the headworks of the Metro Wastewater Reclamation Facility on the east side of Denver. Right now we see 140 million gallons of wastewater on a typical day. That wastewater is treated to meet regulatory requirements and then we discharge it to the South Platte River. Step one is using these bar screens to filter out big objects. Then a primary clarifier settles out smaller solids. And then the real focus of our treatment has to do with what we call biological treatment and harnessing those microorganisms to remove things like pollutants, nutrients, phosphorus, ammonia. These are little tiny organisms. There's billions and billions of billions of these that are creating the clean water for us. And there's a payoff for agriculture. Nutrients are removed from the water and turned into biosolids, which are then used on farms. The water is disinfected, goes through a final cleaning, then it's discharged right back into the South Platte. Producing clean water that makes up a great portion of the flows in the South Platte River so that it can be used downstream for aquatic life, for water supplies, for agricultural purposes, that is the mission of our district. Even though we're close to the source, we're very much in tune with this cycle of the river where water is used and reused and put back in the river and reused again. Testing the cleanliness of the water as it leaves this plant and many wastewater plants around the U.S. is one of the tasks of the National Water Quality Assessment Program. It's run by the U.S. Geological Survey from the Denver Federal Center. The USGS has long-term monitoring in about 100 rivers nationwide that we've been monitoring since the early 90s and in some cases since the early 70s, um, including a couple of sites here in Colorado. So here in Denver, we can see the transition pretty quickly because it's so clean in the mountains and then it hits Denver. But the most dramatic change in the water comes after it leaves the metro area, when the South Platte heads east to the farmlands of the Great Plains. There we see the first buildup of nitrogen and phosphorus. Those are the nutrients which, in this region, are created by human activity and agricultural runoff. And in excess, they eventually contribute to creating that dead zone in the Gulf of Mexico. The USGS keeps a close eye on nitrogen and phosphorus, and also on other contaminants that enter the water supply. It's one of the more unusual contaminants that we, we pick up sometimes is the, the actual coating on pills. So the, the wow. material that's used to coat pills, uh, we frequently see downstream of um, 
areas where we see the other pharmaceuticals in the water as well. Many of them are partially removed by treatment plants, but many are also not completely removed. Another contaminant that's a particular issue in the urban setting would be E. coli. But it's one that the South Platte is, is not usually in compliance with. This is Confluence Park in downtown Denver. It's a spot that looks perfect for taking a dip, but there are often warnings about high E. coli levels. So the water is generally not swimmable, but it has been cleaned up significantly from its dirtiest days in the 1960s, thanks to the 1972 Clean Water Act. It's important to remember that the South Platte River in 1965 was little more than an open flowing sewer. Uh, raw sewage was dumped into the river. Um, chemical plants dumped into the river, uh, utility plants dumped into the river. There were seven landfill dump sites up and down the river just in Denver, the city and county of Denver alone. The Greenway Foundation is a nonprofit that has led efforts to clean up the South Platte in Denver. Executive Director Jeff Shoemaker says there still needs to be more awareness that much of our day-to-day -day trash can end up in our rivers. The reality is that the large amount of trash and debris that get into a stormwater system end up in a tributary which ends up in the South Platte. Keeping the South Platte clean is key to the region's future, says Denver water technician Chris Ray. It is really the story of the West. Without the water that exists here, both in the mountains and in Denver, you wouldn't have the development that we have. Development that isn't slowing down. Tens of thousands of people move to the Denver metro area every year, increasing demand on the water supply. This is just the first test as the water makes its way through the country, with the biggest challenge immediately to the east, as the South Platte hits the agricultural belt.